Hello my soccer universe to my preview of the Europa League final. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit different than I did before. I have prepared a presentation where you can where I put some facts together to get you even more info to this Europa League final than you usually would get from my preview videos. Uh, as you can see I decorated the set with Chelsea and Arsenal jersey, the home jerseys that I have and I'm wearing the third jersey I have of these two teams, which is the Chelsea away jersey. Uh, we won't see a Chelsea away jersey in the final, as you will see in the presentation. Why am I wearing Chelsea and not being neutral? Because honestly, I'm not neutral and not because I dislike Arsenal and I prefer Chelsea over Ar Arsenal. Uh, truth is, in the 90s, Chelsea was my English team. Uh, but, you know, I always had a lot of respect for Arsenal and never really disliked Arsenal. Um, it was just that Chelsea played the more sexy football and also that uh, Chelsea had all those foreign stars that I saw in the Italian league, namely Milan, from Ruud Hullet to uh, Marcel Desailly, and of course they also had uh, Viali, all those great uh, names. But then Arsenal had Bergkamp, later Henri, so great, great teams in, in the 90s, and now they are meeting at the highest stage. Uh, the main reason though why I cheer for a Chelsea is because of my favorite team, Lusk. Um, if Chelsea wins, since they already have the Champions League spot secured, um, then uh, this would mean, and you know, the win of the Europa League gets the Champions League spot. They have already secured the Champions League spot. This means that Lusk moves up one round in Champions League qualification, meaning the third round. And even if you lose in the third round, you get a spot in the Europa League group stage. Otherwise, they will start in the second round, have no group stage guaranteed. Arsenal doesn't have a Champions League spot yet, so a win for Arsenal would undo this. So therefore, I have a preference for Chelsea. And having said all that, it is still weird to me that Lusk played last Thursday a friendly by invitation of Arsenal in London against Arsenal. You, you be the judge. I really don't understand. And everyone, at least at Lusk, is aware that they want Chelsea to win. So, I mean, it would be better for them if Chelsea wins. For that simple reason, I am hoping that Chelsea will win this final. But, you know, this is the first information, which is probably the least important one. Let's go straight into the presentation and look at all the other facts. So here we are, my official match preview of the Europa League final between Chelsea and Arsenal. Chelsea is the home team, as we will see. And the referee is, of course, Gianluca Rocchi from Italy. The game is played in Baku and the Olympic Stadium. A very contentious decision, especially since Arsenal's Mkhitaryan cannot... Or the, Cannot does not want to play there because of the Azerbaijan-Armenia um, conflict. And it's of course played on May 29th at 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Central European time, that means 8 o'clock in London, means 10 o'clock if you're in Eastern Europe. How did the teams get there? Well, let's start with Chelsea. Chelsea in the group stage quite uh, well. A beating Pauk away from home 1 0. This was the first game, then against Molvidi 1 0. Then they had the double against Bate Borisov again, two wins 3 1 and 1 0. Pauk, I think at that point they already had qual qualified, then they beat Pauk at home 4 0. And only in the last game they played 2 2 against Molvidi at a time when it really didn't matter anymore. In the same stage, um, Arsenal first played at home to Poltava. Uh, where they had a 4 0 lead, uh, only played 4 2. Then in uh, Karabag Akdam, so they already played in Azerbaijan, it's the Azerbaijani champion, where they beat them 3 0. And then away from home, they beat Sporting 1 0, but only a goalless draw at home to Sporting. Uh, they win again against Poltava 3 0 away from home, and then 1 0 um, at, uh, at home against Karabag Akdam. Kind of a down, down result, but then. Arsenal was not uh, that big of a, uh, was already qualified, so it didn't matter much for him. So both teams finished their group stage with five wins and one draw. Pretty uh, good performance. In the round of 32, Chelsea had to play Malmö, 
uh, which they beat 2-1 uh, away from home and then easily 3-0. Whereas Arsenal had a little bit more trouble uh, losing at, uh, away from home to Bat de Borisov and only turning it around um, in the return leg. But uh, both teams win 3-0 at home. So this is the first time where I really say that Chelsea had a slight advantage. Chelsea totally dominated Dinamo Kiev in the round of the round of 16, whereas Arsenal again had a lot of trouble uh, losing in the first leg away to Ren 3-1. For, uh, for them, for fortunately, they quickly got two goals and in the end moved on and eliminated Ren. At this point, I really thought there's a chance of Arsenal getting eliminated. Quarterfinals. Chelsea made the trip to Prague to the surprise team Slavia, which they beat with an almost last-minute goal, 1-0. Uh, and then it seemed all done and dust. I think they were 4-1 up at halftime at home, and uh, Slavia put uh, two back to make it a lot closer than it initially was. But yeah, 4-3, uh, kind of a little bit stumbling. Arsenal, to me, were outsiders against Napoli, but they completely dominated Napoli. Uh, this was probably the worst performance by Napoli uh, this season. And from then on, it was all gone. I mean, Napoli played sensational in the Champions League. As soon as they came into the Europa League, they lost a little bit their ways. Uh, semi-finals, they are Arsenal again, surprising me and probably many others by having two wins against Valencia. Very, very, very uh, easy path to the final for them. Valencia, I think, had a lead. Uh, in the away game, but then Arsenal completely took over. Not so easy for Chelsea, though. This is where they really had uh, some some trouble playing 2-1-1 one, one draws and needing penalties. Um, in both games, they had huge uh, times of where they had lots of possession, but just couldn't get in. I think, especially in Frankfurt, they should have probably gotten a win because they really were the better team. So all in all, both teams have 11 wins. Chelsea has three draws. Uh, Arsenal has one draw and two losses. So um, maybe slight advantage in the way to the uh, final for Chelsea. But then um, in the latter rounds, I think Arsenal was even more impressive than Chelsea. Now, of course, we have two English heavyweights. Let's look at uh, the titles that they've won. Premier League, Chelsea has 6 versus Arsenal's 13. But note, since the last title of Arsenal, Chelsea has added 5 more. So Chelsea is a much more recently big team versus Arsenal's titles. Go back to the 30s, 50s, 70s, even 80s and 90s. Uh, whereas um, Chelsea has only one title uh, prior to the 2000s, which was in 54, 55. FA Camp, almost a similar story um, with 8 wins for Chelsea and 13 for Arsenal, a little bit more even there. But again, Arsenal's going way far back. Uh, and I th it's not as much, I mean, Chelsea has won the most re recent one, but Arsenal has here won 3 in a row, 13, 14, 15. Uh, which Chelsea did not. Chelsea is more successful in the League Cup, having five wins versus only two by Arsenal, and those two have been quite a while. And maybe most important for this final, when you look at European titles, Chelsea has four European titles. They won, of course, the Champions League in 2011-12. Arsenal were only finalists in 2006. They won the Europa League in 12-13. Uh, so basically they had uh, two periods where they, um, uh, two years where they won back-to-back -back cups, they also won the Cup Winners' Cup twice, 70-71 and 97-98. Speaking of Cup Winners' Cup, Arsenal won that one in 93-94, was in the final for the 95 edition, lost to Zaragoza. They also were in the uh, UEFA Cup, what's now the Europa League final, in 2000 against Galatasaray, where they lost on penalties, but they won the Intertoto Fairs, uh, no, the Intercity Fairs Cup, in 69-70, which is a precursor to today's Europa League. So, looking at Europe, Chelsea has a lot more pedigree there. Head-to-head -head between the two teams, and this is teams, and this is all time. Uh, we have Chelsea with 63 wins, 57 draws, and 77 wins for Arsenal. So Arsenal holds the advantage, which is not surprising, given that Arsenal has a much uh, deeper, longer history of being a great team in England as compared to Chelsea. 
The, they met already twice this season, which I think are also the only two meetings between Sarri and Una Emery. Not 100% on that one, but at least as Chelsea and Arsenal coaches, that's for sure, because they both started this season. The first game was a 3-2 win for Chelsea at the Stamford Bridge, with Pedro and Morata giving Chelsea a 2-0 lead. Mkhitaryan and Iwobi equalized before halftime, so pretty great game. And then Marcos Alonso gets the winner for Chelsea. And then early January, uh, right when Chelsea had, had a real rough patch, uh, sorry, um, Arsenal beats them 2-0 through Lacazette and Koscielny, um, was expected at that point in the season. And speaking of the season, we can here look at form curves, where what I did is I used uh, the bookie odds for um, win, draw and loss, um, calculated out of these uh, odds, probabilities, and uh, compared the expected points towards what they actually made and converted this into a percentage. And I averaged this over the season for five games apiece. So if you look at Chelsea's form curve, and not too surprisingly, I mean the five games make it a little bit more uh, noisy than uh, it would be. Chelsea had a really great start to the season, but then leveled out uh, already towards mid-October. Then brief spike again and this was the time when they were really in the running together with City and Liverpool but then they dropped off and by the beginning of um, uh, December the form took the first dip then they came up again and then here's where they had the big Manchester City silos but then actually the form picked up again and this is the time where they really secured their spot in the top three in England also helped by the uh, lack of form of Arsenal and Manchester United. At the end of the season um, it petered a little bit out and so at the moment the current form is 32% because there were lots of draws and during draws actually drop your form uh, down. Uh, on average Chelsea had a 62% uh, form throughout the season so roughly here at this line this was the average performance of Chelsea. Arsenal Pretty much the opposite start. Uh, two really tough games at the beginning. I think the second game was already against, um, I think it had City and Chelsea or something like that, uh, right, right, right at the beginning of the season. So really bad start for them with two losses, but then they pick it up, had a really good run and fell then straight down again, picked it up again. And then the big demolition at Liverpool. And from that moment on here is where Arsenal hit a rough patch. Again, they regained a little bit of form, especially here uh, around the quarterfinal against Napoli. This is where they did very well. And then a uh, horrible string of results towards the end of the season. Although they finished out the season nicely. Here the two Valencia wins way heavily and then also final wins in the season. So Arsenal at the moment has a slightly better form, 60% over the past five games. Of course, we need to take this in a more relative way because uh, the teams have not been playing for almost three weeks, two and a half weeks without a competitive match. So I think this will even out things a lot. I actually am afraid, the same is true for Champions League final, that there's not, um, it will not be as fluid as if the teams would have played last weekend. On average, Arsenal slightly worse. That's expected. Chelsea is high up, so with 58%. So you can see that teams are relatively level. Chelsea maybe having a slight edge, but as of late, Arsenal was the better team. Okay, let's finish it up. Further game notes. Uh, this is the first UEFA final for Chelsea coach Mar uh, Maurizio Sarri. So this is of note because when you compare to Una Emery, he has won the Europa League already three times with Sevilla from 2014-16. He is a veteran and he has... Uh, really great um, experience. He also coached PSG and I think Valencia. Uh, Sarri only now, Napoli, in the European competitions and never took it uh, serious. So for that reason, that might be an edge that you know, Emery definitely has. Um, and that's basically is what is carrying Arsenal also forward. Projected kit matchup, of course, this was about to happen. Uh, we will most likely see it from all I can read is Chelsea will play in their home kit. This means blue shorts, blue uh, shorts and white socks. And Arsenal also can play in their home look. There's no color clash. So in the classically red with the white sleeves, although the this version, I don't like the, this should be red up here, to be honest. 
uh, will also play with white um, shorts and I think they will play with Red Sox. So uh, we will see the classic uh, Chelsea-Arsenal matchup, which is really nice to see. Now, uh, if you look at bookies and 538, 538 gives Chelsea the slight edge, uh, giving 60% chance of winning versus Arsenal's 40%. So this is basically all they need. Everywhere where I look, Chelsea is slightly favored over Arsenal. However, what will be my final pick? Well, I've been going back and forth. Um, I actually agree that Chelsea are the favorites. However, I have a feeling that for two reasons. A, Sarri's inexperience in the uh, in European competition, especially in the final, is a negative for Chelsea. Also, the fact that Arsenal needs to win this game to get into the Champions League. Chelsea is already, already there. So there's a lot more incentive for Arsenal to win this game. And they have proven that they can hurt Chelsea. They will know Chelsea very, very well. Uh, Chelsea is not a surprise for anyone because Sarri always plays the same style. And for that reason, I'm afraid that despite me being in Chelsea's camp, I would say Arsenal wins 2-1 probably in extra time. So I think it will be 1-1 after 90 minutes and then Arsenal wins it 2-1. So there you have it. Uh, all the info that, that you needed plus my projection. As I said, I am leaning Arsenal in this one, although I would agree that Chelsea are slight favorites. But with all the inexperience on Chelsea's side, and also there's a little bit too much with Sarri going to Juventus that I have a feeling that it will be Arsenal who will bring home the trophy, unfortunately. Again, nothing against Arsenal, but I want these guys here in the Europa League group stage next season. But we will see. Let me know your thoughts about uh, this Europe Europa League final. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.